Hi there and welcome to the 14th workout of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. And do not worry if you haven't done the first 13, you can do this one, you can do the next ones, you can do the previous ones, it's entirely up to you. Now this one we're going to do the any way you want kind of row, okay? So it's just 30 minutes, row it as you wish. I am gonna do this uh, as 30 minutes at 18 strokes a minute and run about 2K plus 20 to 22 pace, which is run about five out of 10 effort, which is kind of the same as walking up a flight of stairs, okay? So it's a simple row if you're gonna follow with that, nice low intensity one, or if you have a better idea, please do it that way, okay? Now let's get into our four minute warm up as always, and please do set up your machine how you would like it to be. This is how I do it. So on a concept two, I go straight to the front and set the drag factor to where I want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, please set it between four and five because too low isn't an issue, too high is when, is when it becomes an issue, okay? If you're on a non-concept two, then please just set the resistance so you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it to get it moving. Next up, if you're able to, please set your monitor to eye height because that helps your posture because you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, adjust your foot stretcher height so that you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay? If you're set to high can be a little bit troublesome to get there if you set too low you can go scooting past and what that does is it sends your backside out from underneath you and you lose power okay so we're going to do this warm-up at round about 20 strokes a minute and I want you just to think about enough of a push as though you are standing up okay because we're going to think about pushing at the same time our hands connect to the machine okay I'll explain as we start here we go then in three two one let's begin so what I mean is that you push your feet, so push. At the same time, you feel your hands connect to the machine. And that means the point when the handle kind of snaps into it, whether it's a flywheel like a Concept2 or a water wheel or a magnet or whatever your machine uses, or even if you're in the water, you will feel a point when you pick up, where you have to brace against what your machine uses and you want to push your feet at the same time that your hands connect. And if you can keep your arms straight and a forwards lean as you do that, then that power will go from your feet into the machine. If you pull too soon, you lose your leg power. And if you push too soon, like I said before, your backside will escape and you'll lose power. But when you get it right, especially when you start to increase that power, which you can do now, just take it to that intensity like you're walking up a flight of stairs. When you get it right, you should feel your backside go a little lighter on the seat. Okay, not lift off. Because trust me, you don't want the seat to leave your bottom and then land on the rail. But just a little lighter. And then you can really feel like you're hanging off the handle. Right, two more strokes. One more, and then we'll put one foot on the ground. So loosen your strap, foot on the ground. Continue rowing. Whew. It's a bit cold today, I'm a bit short. <laughs> short of breath. <laughs> oh, it's a problem with doing this in November. I should really do this in the summer, when it's a bit warmer. Okay, three more here and we'll change feet. Or maybe it's because I kept on speaking without taking a breath. Right, change feet. So one back in. Other one out, carry on rowing. This just helps with your flexibility coming into the front, helps you with that forwards tilt over your hips, helps you with those shins nice and vertical at the front, because it's, well, one leg in, it's just easier. Okay, let's take one more stroke here and put both feet back in, tighten those straps, Legs straight and roll with your back and arms. So pick up that initial tension by swinging your back. But then as you connect and you start that swing, that's when you pull your arms in, okay? So swing first, then pull, 
then out with the arms, and then rock forwards. Okay, one more. And let's roll to the front with that forwards tilt and straight arms, and push out from the front. Push, work on that connection, the push of your legs and the handle connecting at the same time. Whilst also holding this forwards tilt and straight arms as you do so, okay? Don't swing back. You wait until the back of the stroke. It's all about the legs. One more here. Ooh, right. So, that is the warm up done. Ooh, nice and warm. Uh, and I'm gonna do what I uh, have been doing for most videos so far, where it's just replay the video that recorded last year. Now, this one I did on Erg Race at the same time, so I did it as a live video. So when I start talking about the software and all the features and stuff, just ignore me, okay? I mean, ignore me most of the time. But yeah, but you, because you won't see that stuff. <laughs> so uh, enjoy your row. I will see you in about half an hour for the cool down and some stretching. Right, it's important, I mean, I, ah, there we go. Prepare to race is on screen. Oh, you can see, hopefully see that in the background. Sit ready. Yeah. Attention, oh, almost full start then. Go. Uh, right, so like I said, because I have done something weird to my intercostals, I am rowing this. Uh, at a much reduced drag factor all the way down around about 88 and instead of worrying about holding a pace I'm just using this to go through almost like a rehab row so pace wise I'm a good five seconds off what I want to be and I can still feel it just niggling a little bit, but hopefully, because this is nine o'clock in the morning, I'll have the rest of the day today and most of tomorrow for it to recover too. So, so you can see, it's a good time to talk about our grace actually, in case you're not used to seeing what a race setup is like. So there's four of us in this, As you can see, really. The little yellow boat looking things are where we are in the race because I'm down at 208 pace, as you can see on screen. I'm languishing behind. Now my PM5 in front of me just shows the leader and then where I am, fourth place, and then the person in front of me. So I can't see, like for instance, I can't see Sam. If there was someone behind me, I'd see that on screen as well, but because I'm last. Yeah, but it's a good piece of race software, free from, Concept 2. The only thing really that's lacking right now is like a central hub to go to to find out where people have set up public races. So say I decided to set up a 9 o'clock at night race hoping that people would find it and join in. Yeah, I can post that across all of the socials but really what you want is somewhere kind of like Ropro where you can just go see what races are coming up over the next few days and plan your week hopefully Concept2 realise this and it's in development so anyway let's talk about rowing It's quite interesting being down at minimum drag factor on this machine in that it does feel very 
what's the right word? For well, light, I suppose. But the difference, if I miss that snap of my feet connecting to my hands, or if I swing my back too soon, like this, if I go and just break too quick, I just slow right down. Look at that, I've gone from 210 pace to 215 with the same leg drive. Let's go back to normal. So I'm putting in the same perceived push from my legs, but because I have this forward lean and arms straight, that power is able to get up into the machine and the body position lets me hang off the handle to flood that power in there. I say flood. Is that the right word? Surge. Uh, um, but it's important, the forward lean and the hang, that moment where you feel the force going through your arms. And that's the key. The force goes through your arms as you drive with your legs. You're not putting force in with your arms. Does that make sense? I mean, hanging off the handle in a forward lean and straight arms, pushing with my legs, I can feel the tension as my hands connect to the handle. But it doesn't feel as though I'm pulling on the handle. If I was to really pick it up early, engage my biceps and tug on it like this, then, well, my pace goes up. <laughs> Maybe I've got it all wrong. <laughs> no. Uh, but that's an example of the force being generated by your arms rather than the force flowing through your arms. And the point is that if you can push with the legs and then pull with the arms, and that's the part I'm not really doing today because of my slight intercostal issue, then you get legs power, you then get your back power as you swing from that forward lean into the back lean, and then you get arm power as well. So I mean, right, let's try, if I push properly, let's do a couple strokes. Yeah, so that's me right up at the same pace that I was rowing at when I was joking about pulling with the arms being better. But the trick, or the, not trick, the, the key to remember here is you're trying to row with a technique that kind of protects you. And what I mean by protects is that it doesn't tire you out too quick and it doesn't injure you. So I think last night's 60 second row is a great example of how you can get injured quite easily. How I've tweaked my intercostal because 
I raised the drag factor up a little bit because at a higher rate that's a good way to get a little bit more pace out of the machine over such a short time but also at that higher rate because I was just trying to squeeze out as much power as I could my technique wasn't great I was really adding in upper body power mostly because of the higher drag factor to be honest rather than letting her legs take care of the power and so if you look back at the example of me just pulling out early with the arms although it was making me go faster than I'm rowing right now that's because I was putting in a lot of grunt through my arms to kind of to show off really all right we're 10 minutes done um, but let's see this is a 30 minute row at 20 strokes a minute so that's if I stick to stroke rate the whole weight that is 600 strokes now if I was to do that big early pull pull in order to try and get a little bit more pace out 600 times I would well even demonstrating it just then my shoulder issue I've got started to flare up but even if through the process of doing it 600 times you didn't injure yourself which is still likely I mean you're asking for let's see yeah tennis elbow I could feel it right down my forearms so in my case if I was to pull early with the arms for half an hour I'd re-aggravate the shoulder injury from grabbing so hard at the front I'd be on a one-way trip to tennis elbow and chances are I'd damage my biceps too but that's if I could even manage it 600 times I don't think I could because those muscles aren't really designed for like full power longevity your legs are okay your legs and your lats they're big and powerful they're happy putting in a whack of power so you push with the legs to add in loads of power and then you pull in elbows through handle into sternum height in order to use your lats at the back of the stroke and then those two they're like the workhorses of your body they're just going to let you row and row and row with good power so it can seem I know we're not really talking proper technique technique today but I think this is a good day to be talking about it because I'm a little bit injured but you can watch someone who's rowing fast with a pretty weird technique and think well they're rowing fast and it's definitely going to be part of it due to their technique but it's easy to look at them and want to copy them but once again if you don't have a strong enough body to take it 
then you can end up injured. And this isn't about, I mean, you'll find a lot of technique bores like me. <laughs> Although I, I'm not like this way, but a lot of people will talk good technique with a view to how you can translate rowing on a rowing machine to being in a boat. Did you know you could do this on the water? Yeah. I know. Madness. It'll never take off. <laughs> Who would do that? Who would drive for half an hour to go to a loch or a lake or a river? Get out all their rigging, climb into a boat, row for an hour and do it in reverse. When you could just come out onto a rowing machine. I jest, of course. But yeah, so a lot of people will talk technique because they want it to be like rowing on a boat. I talk technique because I want you to be safe. I want you to not get injured. And I also want you to have the fitness capacity to get through the row you have in front of you. We're halfway there. Bon Jovi point. Sing along. Whoa. We're halfway there. Hopefully I'm not living on a prayer with this rib thing though. Yeah, so I don't want you to get injured. And I also don't want you to exhaust your muscles. That having a weird technique like pulling early can do to you. Totally missed the leg drive there with that example. But then you can't discount the people that just go fast. I mean, I hope he doesn't mind me bringing him up, but Sam from Fitness Matters, who's running today's live row on our grace, doesn't have what you'd call a conventional on the water technique. It's kind of, if I can do it, he drives and then he finishes quite, he's deep and he's low with the handle. It's a very high finish with the handle and a very deep layback. <clears throat> but the truth is, Sam is one of the few people in the world under six foot tall who has rode a two kilometer time trial under six minutes. So nobody's going to argue that Sam's technique doesn't make a Concept 2 rowing machine go fast. It sure as heck does. And when you see him training, see him in other races, you can just see the power exploding from him into the machine. And Ken Costello sent me a video on Friday of one of the lightweight rowers at the 2020 World Champs who his technique he was very a lot slower stroke rate than the other ones but he was coming right into the front and then really really high finish really deep layback just trying to get maximum length out of his machine okay which again I was doing no more pressing with my legs but my pace jumped up by three or four seconds then mostly as virtue to just getting more length I've got the full chain almost out here and I've increased yeah that's a good four second increase so you're like why don't I do that
And the answer is because my lower back is in agony right now. <laughs> well, not agony, but I could feel the bones, my kind of L2, L3, just clicking away as I was doing that because they really weren't happy with that. The, the power, obviously I can just lean back normally, but because you have the momentum going backwards, that you then have to stop yourself in that deep layback. The amount of force that that puts through your lumbar region is huge. Not to mention the amount of force that goes into your core from having to brace yourself so you don't just flop off the back of the machine like a salmon. And then that's only talking about your trunk, if you want to call it that. Oh, 10 minutes to go. You also have to look at what's going on with the arms. So if you finish high, it all goes into your forearms. Ooh, it's right in there. And your biceps and your delts. Your delts are your shoulders. Um, <clears throat> rather than your lats. Like I say, your lats and your back are big and powerful and designed to take this power whoosh through you. But your forearms, your biceps and your delts aren't really <coughs> designed to take repeated abuse that way. Especially when you're doing a 2k time trial full power <clears throat> so say I was 30 strokes a minute say even if it was 7 minutes that's 210 strokes and 210 abuse force into your arms you have to be really strong in the first place to be, able to, to be able to take that force and not end up in injury. And it must be said, there are a lot of rowers that have this as their stroke, that say, oh, I've had to take a break, I've hurt my lower back, or I've got forearm problems, or I've hurt my neck, etc etc don't think I've heard of anyone having a hernia yet but surely someone must have so that's the trade-off yes you can make the machine go faster if you have one of these exaggerated strokes but Number one, there's a chance you won't be able to hold that stroke through your entire row. But importantly, number two, there's a chance you're really going to injure yourself. And if you properly kind of hurt yourself, you're looking at six weeks or more recovery before you can row again. And so, if you're not able to complete your rows and you have to take a six week break from rowing, where's the value in that? Whereas if you have a better technique, you can learn to use that te technique to go just as fast. I mean, I used to have, when I first started, quite a ropey technique but the form check Fridays I just did 
has me looking at my <coughs> race in 2015 at the Crash Bees. This is before I'd ever thought about technique. And it's okay, but you can see that I come forwards, I drop, and I come up. I come forwards, I drop, and I come up. Now, because I was brute forcing with upper body strength, I still managed like a six, I think it's a 641 2K at that race. Still only came fourth. That was disappointing. But once I started to look into technique more and learned that you don't have to do this drop and rise thing and just have your handle going backwards and forwards in a straight line. And I learned about holding that forward lean as I push with my legs. It took a couple of months to drill it into me and to develop like the back muscles and things to be able to row properly like that. But within, I don't know, a year <coughs> for well, it, wasn't, it didn't take a year to get it right, but a year later, anyway, I rode at the English Indoor Champs with this new stroke. And it was up at, it was 6.37 I finished in. So not only had I managed with a much safer technique and that's safer in terms of energy and injury and not not just matched my PB from the old per technique but I'd taken four seconds off it because I was doing it the way I wanted to be doing it rather than just this random technique I'd picked up. So, all I'm really saying is that it can be very attractive when you see the big boulder guys doing some really weird stroke, but going very fast. But number one, you don't really need to be doing that. And number two, you're gonna get injured if your body isn't prepared for it. <clears throat> like for the, I might see if I can find other videos of this lightweight that I was mentioning. So I did find it really intriguing. She did come fourth in the lightweight World Open Championships. So he was, or is, very strong and powerful but I don't actually know his background is he actually an on the water rower that has good technique for the water but just knows how to make a concept to go fast and I mean listen you look at him when he comes into his layback you can see his six pack popping up through his t-shirt so this is what I mean about making sure that your body is strong enough to be able to deal with the power, the force that it has to go through if you're doing one of those real deep layback rows. So if I can find info about him and if I have any way to get in touch and ask, I might at least talk about this on one of the Forum Check Fridays because it is a really hot topic. It's not like I'm unaware of the fact that a lot of people will go a little bit slower at first when they start to 
think about just driving with the legs and then pulling with the arms at the back of the stroke rather than right now your stroke might well be that you pull with your arms pull as though you're rowing a viking ship but like i say it's all about protecting your energy system and your muscles because most people row like this to get a good workout to make sure that they put in a great cardio workout and a great muscle body workout too and that only works if you're able to complete your sessions at the same intensity whereas if you completely blow up because you're heaving at the stroke with a high drag factor all the time using your upper body then you're not really getting that benefit that's the other thing to quickly say about crash b my drag factor for that was 185 so that's why i was heaving against the stroke last stroke there you go so i was a good kilometer behind mark evans who was in third place um and michael came first with sam in it still yeah yeah cool so i hope you enjoyed that row however you did it even though i finally had my hair cut and i've shaved off my beard it was still a sweat fest so let's get ourselves into a two minute cool down before we get too cool oh it's always important to get this don't wait too long, maybe wait a couple of minutes in between finishing and uh, entering the cool down. Uh, no longer really. So here we go then, we're gonna do this around about the pace you did the warm up at in three, two, one. Let's go. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's just a good old grind for me. Sometimes you just wanna dial in that slow row, give yourself a chance to just zone out almost work on your technique pick something like one feature at a time for me today I'm trying to concentrate on getting that drive right so that I can feel my backside getting a little bit looser on the seat oh, looser? No, 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 no lighter, lighter <laughs> it's because I can hear my shoe is making uh, scatological noises and I think somehow subconsciously Sorry about that. Oh. Talking of noises, I posted a video yesterday that was showcasing a feature on the editing software I use where I can basically remove the sound of the flywheel. So you just get clean audio of me talking to you. It's quite magical if you ask me. But I posted it and kind of said, do you want me to start doing this so you can hear me clearer? And I think pretty much 100% of people said, no, <laughs> no, we need the sound of the flywheel. It's reassuring. It helps us to zone out. So there's now a hashtag, keep the flywheel, or keep the whoosh. That's what it is. Keep the whoosh. So, take a look at that video if you wish. And let me know what you think. Should I remove the wish or should we keep the wish? There you go, see so you can hear. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> That's my foot squeaking away, don't worry, it's not. <laughs> It's not my backside. Anyway, right, let's get into a stretching session. If you don't have time to stretch, then please take a moment to stretch your quads and your hamstrings, okay? Not in the shower, I don't want you to slip and fall over, but please take that moment, okay? Or, Stretchy John has joined us at the top corner. Hey, Stretchy John. And then I will take us through some stretching on the machine for if you don't have room. So, here we go. So put your feet back in the foot plates, straps loose. Shoes still making a noise. <laughs> Flick your toes back against them so you can create a nice ang angle between your feet and your shins. Put your hands in the air, legs straight. Fold forwards. Oh, yeah. And that should get you right in there. You should feel... Burns the, the wrong word, but you should feel like that. Well, basically, a stretch. 
If you've never stretched before, you've never had the sensation of a stretched muscle. If you've done this right, that's the sensation. Okay, it should feel almost like, like it does when you're, when you're working hard and you get that kind of zing in your muscle, but this is one because you're not putting any exertion into it, you're just stretching it, you can hold that pain, you know it's good, it's because it's stretching, okay? So you should really feel it right here in your hamstrings, okay? Oh, we're gonna move on to glutes next. So put one foot up on the rail, other foot comes over so that your heel is in the crook of your knee. Bring this knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with the other arm and then you can rotate your body round. Hold on to the back of the machine for stability if you wish. But the important part here is making sure this knee is still coming across your body because that's what gives you your stretch right down here in your glutes. Uh, uh, yeah, and I've got, I've still got, what day is it today? So today's Sunday. Sorry to throw this all out of wax. I know you'll be watching this on a, well, who knows what day, but I'll be posting this on a Monday. Um, uh, and it was Friday I was doing a Monster High Rocks training session that had loads of lunges, loads of wall balls and loads of burpees in it. Um, and good grief, my quads and my glutes. I've still, this is two days later, I've still got DOMS, delay onset muscle soreness. Let's change legs. Rawr. Um, and you know what? It's lovely. Like I said before, I think I'd, I'd kind of hit a comfort zone where I was training within, just within my abilities. I was pushing myself a little bit. I was la 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 la, but not really pushing, pushing myself. And now that I've started doing this high rocks training with James, um, the, the sensations I'm feeling in my body are things that I've not felt for ages. It's lovely. Um, not that I'm giving up on rowing, don't worry, this isn't, I'm not like, hey man, I'm all about high rocks now. I'm still all about rowing, and the whole point is, is this high rock stuff, I want that to feed into my rowing, that, that because I'm now training out of my comfort zone, I can bring that back to the rowing again. Let's do quads, so if you want to rest a hand on your monitor just to keep your balance, then flick your heel up so that it touches your backside, and then just pull a little bit to feel a nice stretch into that quad. Ooh. But yeah, I'm kind of hoping, uh, that just this, this whole, the work ethic that I've got now with High Rocks, um, I'm going to bring into the rowing things. So I do think, as much as I've been, I, I know I've been injured. I know that there's been, I know like with COVID at the beginning of this year and stuff, there's been various reasons why I've not been able to train at maximum. I think eventually you get so used to training at a lower intensity that that becomes the maximum that you want to, to row at or to work at. So. Um, to completely shift, let's change legs, to completely shift to a different sport and then train in a, because it's a total unknown how I train on that. It's, there's no, it's like a 2K, I know I can do 640 and it's going to hurt like, well, it's going to really be really, really tough, but I know what that's going to feel like. Whereas everything I do in high rocks, I've got no idea how it's going to feel, so I just do it. And there's no fear of how it's going to feel like, and I think that's the thing that I'm kind of now missing for the rowing. Right, let's do our hip flexors next. So one knee on the ground, one foot in front of you. The one that's in front, your knee is up above your foot. Uh, the foot that's at the back is up on its toes. You've got right angles on both legs and then just push the hip that has the knee on the ground forwards while keeping a, whoop, a good posture. There you go, there's my falling over. <laughs> well, keep a good posture, but push, like open up the angle of your back leg to push that hip forwards. And that should give you a nice, as long as you've got that good posture, if you lean to, if you lean forwards basically with your upper body, you totally lose that stretch, or at least I do. But if you keep a good posture, almost leaning back, but not leaning back, but it's a good posture, you really do feel it right in your hip flexor. Change legs, do exactly the same thing, then push that, that forwards. And you'll find it's like a subtle, Subtle change in how you're holding your body or your legs or whatever. Just a tiny little subtle change will suddenly, you'll go, what? Oh, I've got the stretch right there. <laughs> and, it's there. and it's there. So do, for every single stretch, do kind of change things. If you don't feel you're getting the stretch right, just think, hang on, is it my posture? Is it the angles I've got here? Am I actually pushing that hip forwards or am I just kind of going through the motions and, and thinking I'm doing that? If you don't feel the stretch, there's not that you're losing a lot of the point of doing it. I was about to say there's not much point doing it, but of course there's a point doing it. So anyway, uh, let's do forearms next. So hands together in front of you, bonk, and then push them together and then push them down at the same time. Okay, 
and you should get stretched kind of in your underneath your wrists uh, and in your forearms like on the under, underside of your forearms and your fingers should get a nice little stretch here as well from pushing together it's a really nice stretch for, for doing that kind of doing your fingers and your forearms basically um, which let's face it they do get as much as you're not pulling the handle they do get a lot of use just from kind of hooking and hanging and transferring that power in so this is why we still stretch um, forearms and shoulders which we'll do next so hands hands straight in front of you hi and then push it across your body hold it in place with your other arm and that'll just give you a nice little stretch right there in your delts um, or upper delts wherever it be or in between your delts because that's when you are when you're doing the stroke right and you're pushing with your feet and you're hanging off the handle um, and you and your backside does feel a little bit lighter on the seat this is why it's because all that power is transferring through your shoulders down through your arms and into the handle and that transfer although you're not yanking and pulling and fighting against the power with your muscles that transfer still does put a lot into your shoulders so not in terms of effort but like the the hanging off your tendons and things so it's a good idea to stretch them just to kind of give your tendons and your ligaments a little bit of relief um, after a, a tough row so um, to be fair though that's the same with all stretching it's all about um, giving your muscles a like a oh there we go ah. so the reason you stretch when you wake up in the morning is just to get your muscles kind of like oh there we go we're all ready to go so it's like kind of the reverse of this it's like we have been going we're just like we're now like our muscles are nice and ready to cool down and settle down and go have dinner and yeah right uh, let's do biceps next hands behind you like your ski jumper and rotate your thumbs outwards which stretches the long head of your bicep so it's a sunday night in uh, my house sunday night is pretty much always like a big veggie dinner so like sprouts cauliflower broccoli carrots peas um, some kind of potatoes sometimes it's a potato waffle sometimes it is potato croquettes sometimes it's sweet uh, roast sweet potato um, uh, what else we do? Don't really do mashed potato for a Sunday dinner, uh, but uh, uh, cauliflower cheese, mm -hmm, homemade, and then uh, a killy pie, which you may not be too familiar with, but it's basically it's like a mince pie, um, not a Christmas mince pie, but like a beef mince pie in a nice thick, um, uh, pit, thick crusty pastry, not crusty, thick pastry. But yeah, oh. yum me. Type in killy pie. Or Kilmarnock pie, and you'll see what I'm on about. If you if you care, but well, you might not care. Let's do triceps next. So put your hand up in the air, but then it swoops down to your back and it touches your spine. Your elbow is kind of pointing up in the air, but give it a wee helping hand with your other arm, and then so that it points straight up. And then if you want to just kind of lean your body to one side, then that will and kind of open up that muscle. That will also stretch your uh, lats as well. <laughs> I can see, hopefully you can't, but looking in the mirror that's in front of me, I can see steam coming off me. It's because it's so cold. It's so cold. Scotland really is so cold. I'm, a, I'm built for the heat, to be honest. Right, I'd like to change arms. This is why I loved Vegas so much when I went. I can't believe it's been almost a year since I went to Vegas. Um, but I just loved it so much. It was what beginning of January I was there, and it was 25 degrees and walking around in shorts. So I was just thinking, oh... And I was saying to Jamie, my, my oldest, uh, I said, oh, I just love to just move there and live there, teach people how to row during the day, play the drums in a band at night. It'd be perfect. And she's like, but it'd be too hot. It's like 50 degrees in the summer. And I'm like, I know, I'd be inside. <laughs> I wouldn't be outside. Still. Couldn't quite sell her on the merits of moving to Vegas. Kids, eh? Kids nowadays. <laughs> anyway there we go that's us all done uh with today's workout i do hope you enjoyed it so basically every so like 7 14 21 28 uh day of uh this these 30 days of 30 minute rows is a kind of row as you wish i still tell you what i'm going to do but it's still a row as you wish but you'll probably work that out already so do remember and uh if you wish to leave some kind of comment about whether you uh would like uh the sound of the flywheel or not then take a look at the video you should see it um, I think I posted it, so it'll be the one right before this one, to be honest. Um, yeah, and you can kind of say, oh, no, it's reassuring to have that wish, or say, oh, I actually quite like the clear sound of your voice. No one's going to say they'd prefer just the sound of my voice. Um, but yeah, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you in row uh, 15 will be the next one. Uh, until then, please take care of yourselves. Be well. Bye-bye.